what advice do you give to Latino and other people of color who want to get into acting or into the entertainment world based on your experience? Uh, looking back, uh, what are some things you would have done differently? Or any advice? Advice-wise, I, I give them, uh, tell them to please join up. Uh, the need is essential and it's really uh, something that's wide open. I think that the uh, majority of the people right now I would love to see diversity in the art forms. Uh, it just makes them stronger. People realize that the more they know about each other, the better they are as human beings. So um, I think the art forms are going to catch up, but uh, they're still behind. If it wasn't for the African American experience in the United States, there'd be very little to cheer about. So I'm very grateful that they've been able to move forward. Um, as far as uh, the youth, I would advise them this is a great time to get into the arts, especially in front of uh, in television, motion pictures, acting, producing, directing, writing, uh, anything to do with uh, holding down one of the strongest mediums of what's ever created. Uh, this is truly a gift, this kind of medium. So basically, I invite them to take advantage of it and jump in. It's a privileged life. I've been living in now for 60 years. I gotta tell you, take it for one who knows. <laughs> it's a privilege and a great honor, and it's really a lot of fun, and I highly recommend it for everyone. Male, female, you know, um, black, white, brown, yellow, red. And you're also known for your activism. Mm -hmm. I just want to know uh, what role uh, do you feel that actors should be uh, taking in social justice issues? I think human beings in particular should participate as much as possible on all levels of contribution towards the humanity and society they live in, uh, whether they be actors, doctors, uh, plumbers, engineers, electricians, whatever the world they are, uh, just, you know, jump on board and help. It's helping when you, get part when you participate in the community, especially when you vote. Uh, I highly recommend that everyone vote in the coming presidential election. We should, uh, hopefully, we can break 90 percentile, you know, but I think the uh, apathy and, and a lot of just frustration keep a lot of people away from the voting blocks. And that's, they, you're, they're playing right into exactly what they're so, uh, you know, angry about. You know, when you don't vote, you really have quite censored yourself. So I hope everybody will empower themselves by just getting out there and voting, even though we have a little bit of a problem. The last electoral vote was uh, quite difficult to take. When the popular vote went one way and the electoral vote went another, it gets to be tough to understand our process. <clears throat> yes, go ahead. You just spoke of how Latinos are <coughs> underrepresented in the media. Mm -hmm. And what can we do to change that? Is there anything that we can do to change that? Yeah, there's everything we can do to change that. One is to demand that whenever you see anything that has to do with indigenous First Nation people or uh, Asian American people or uh, Latino cultures, uh, that you go out there immediately and see those films and that, those, that artwork, whatever it might be, dance, uh, you know, music, whatever. You make it so that they see that people are really interested in that kind of art form. So it's the interest that the populace shows towards the arts that will really augment the arts. If you want to increase, uh, you know, the visibility of, of uh, people of, say, uh, Asian cultures. Uh, just whenever they have a really good movie, just go watch it. But make that when you're first, as soon as it comes out, you gotta go. Make that weekend, the first weekend, the most effective one that they can have. And that really does change the tide a lot. Uh, you were involved with the Los Angeles Latin uh, International Film Festival, as well as Americanos Latino in the mm -hmm. United States. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think media can be used to not only, I mean, because it might be hard to get more of a representation in the media, but how can it be used to reach the kids and get them involved as a tool, media as a tool? I think that's the key, okay? The key to, to, to understanding what's going on is to really understand what happens when you use dance, when you use um, poetry, when you use uh, song, when you use literature, when you use theater, you use television and motion picture to really understand the human, you know, 
journey. And uh, that's nothing attacks the subconscious mind more than the audiovisual event when it's pushed onto the big screen. You know, when you go into the theater and you sit down, there's no peripheral vision, and you're sitting there and you're watching something, it goes straight into your brain. And then your conscious mind thinks that it's receiving the images and understanding it all and you know has value to it. You actually filter, you know, oh I like that, oh I don't like that. Oh, but your subconscious mind doesn't do that. All the subconscious mind does is register everything. It doesn't place any kind of value on it. It just documents and registers everything. That's why when you go home and you go to sleep and your conscious mind goes to sleep, your subconscious mind then takes off on a journey and sometimes it incorporates the images that you just finished seeing, you know? That's why a lot of people don't like the movie Psycho and why a lot of people can't go and see, you know, Jaws because they get out of, <laughs> they have these images at night and they have these images that keep on flashing from the subconscious into the conscious. And the conscious mind thinks it's so cool that it actually governs the brain, which is a farce. It's the subconscious mind that governs everything. It, it's, uh, we finally figured out that the subconscious mind gets turned on by the end of the first trimester. Okay. That we just barely started to figure out. And it doesn't really stop until the brain is dead. So from the moment, the first, first three months of its inception, to the time that it dies, it's on 24-7. It never stops, ever. Does it sleep? And that's really hard to conceive, you know, people don't get it yet. They think when you go to sleep, I'm gonna go rest. Subconscious mind never rests, it's constantly working. So. It's quite an ambitious little machinery we have here. And then we filter in there anything, you know, when was the last movie you saw, right? It attacks straight inside. It goes right in there. So we'll talk about that tonight. That's why I'm here. The impact of, of the media on culture and on the human species. It's quite impressive. Yeah. You'll enjoy it.